Greg. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Scott makes the case that one of the drivers of shareholder value in the next five years will be Gen Y consumption or your ability to tap into that consumption. He also made the case that it would be in China or in Asia. I, I believe that the other driver of shareholder value in the next five years for big companies, for marketers, will be the percentage of revenue derived online. So the amount of demand you can generate using digital platforms. And in doing that, uh, or trying to do that, we all have a big problem. So here's the bad news of the presentation. Your audience is not nearly big enough. So most of you today think about your web marketing in this context probably. I've added a little bit of Facebook and, and retargeting and search. But I would argue that your audience online in the next five years has to be huge. Probably five or 10 times the size of your current audience in the next five years, something like that. It could be as much as 20 times your current audience size. I'm not Gen Y, and one way we can tell that is here's what comes into my house via mail. Last eight days. That's Bella, the, the black lab. Here's what we've been hearing. You've heard a lot of this already. Why? Because these brands and internet companies have been the training wheels for this generation. So Scott asked me to talk about finding Gen Y online and not talk about social media, which is hard to do. What I decided to talk about is blogs. Remember blogs? You probably all have a, that long tail book on your nightstand or near it still maybe, unread perhaps, cover, you know, magazine cover stories. I would argue, in fact, there's probably still more social activity going on inside of the, the, sort of the blogosphere and the commenting sort of components of blogs than, than inside of Facebook perhaps. So I want to, as marketers, I want to bring it back to blogs just for a couple minutes to, to remind ourselves what a powerful um, marketing vehicle they are. So I'm going to be very pragmatic in my, in my uh, talk today. Um, people rely on blogs in terms of making product decisions. And as marketers, I think we have to reconnect with these audiences in a very specific and significant way. As an example, if you're a marketer or a media planner thinking about trying to reach young women and sort of trying to do it very efficiently, you'd start here with big sites. If you then added sort of the, the filter of high concentration, You'll see some different site names, but some more, but still kind of traditional media companies or, or websites. If you added the, the filter of you wanted a very passionate, fashion savvy audience, now the list dramatically changes. And Tavi's uh, site is probably on this list as well if you extend it from 10 to 50 or 10 to 1,000. This is where your audience is. And if you are searching for men, kind of same idea. As many, so concentrated, and now think about tech savvy and influential men, and the list of sites that where you should have presence changes dramatically. And again, goes from 25 to probably 1,000. So we know the advantages of, of big old media on the web, big media basically, very safe, very efficient, very quick for you as a marketer to make decisions around how to deploy media uh, and advertising spend. I think, however, as you can, as you probably know from experience, increasingly cluttered and hard really, I think, uh, to cut through. Uh, blogs, we'll just call them blogs, uh, lots of them, very authentic, very passionate, um, very sort of pure, if you will, in terms of the audience and the blogger and that sort of relationship. Hard to work with though. So as marketers, I know that it's very hard for you to do this. Doing scaled marketing campaigns across a lot of blogs is still very difficult. But I believe it's worth the effort. And I'd ask you to go back uh, and sort of really challenge your marketing teams to come up with scaled campaigns that really can be authentic across uh, what we used to call the long tail. Uh, some three uh, sort of rules, if you will, or, or suggestions. One is to really spend some time understanding where your consumers are spending their time online. Not the obvious sites, but really dig deep and understand where they spend time. You'll be really surprised, I think on uh, the number of sites that they visit on a weekly or daily basis, and there are sites you probably haven't heard of, but they're relevant to your brand or relevant to your category uh, or your consumer. Uh, you can find them easy, easily on big, uh, big web media. They just don't click. 
And I don't, I don't think they care that they see you there. In the research that we do, Gen Y consumers told us they don't care to see your brand in what they would consider mass sites. It's not relevant to them at that point in time. And I think that's in part for Gen Y in particular why click-through rates are so low on traditional ad units. I also think we will all need a new marketing dashboard in the next few years. From impressions to cookies, or uniques to cookies rather, from not just fans and followers, I think we're all running around now sort of acquiring fans and followers, perhaps not sure what they're worth, are they worth $3.60 or a dollar or five. I think we're gonna really think about this as not just acquiring them, but using them obviously as advocates. And as it relates to blogs, I think we think about them traditionally as, in terms of prestige brands as a PR effort. We wanna sort of rent space once in a while through a product launch or a sort of a episodic outreach. And I think we need to think about leasing space on blogs in a sustained way and really sort of participate in what, what, what Gen Y is doing with, you know, with this media. Lots of examples now, there were less a couple of years ago, lots of examples now of brands with their agencies figuring out really integrated and interesting campaigns that are, that are anchored around uh, blog communities. I have four questions for you. The first is, is your content worth sharing? I believe your ads, of course, are like content. And if Gen Y don't share or comment, they don't care. And there are now great tools like Tony showed us, including Chartbeat, that can allow us real time to really understand, are people caring enough? The second question I'd ask you to ask your teams is, are you making them come back to your own website? And if you are, you shouldn't, right? We really need to take our brands as prestige marketers out to where our consumers are and not be lazy and force the consumer to do the work to come back uh, to, the, to your .com. That's the brand being lazy. If your blogger wants you to, if the blogger wants you to pay for placement, you probably haven't done enough. So I think a, t a sort of a nice filter, a very, it's a very high bar, I would admit. But if the blogger wants you to pay, then you, they basically think you're an advertiser, not a participant in their community. And then finally, do you have the right media partners? And again, I would suggest probably not. And this would be the homework assignment, which is can you come up quickly with the list of the 25 blogs that you should care about? And then once you've done that, add, go to 250. And once you've done that, go to 1,000. If you, then if you can fill this uh, out, I think you're in great shape. So I got very tactical for seven minutes. I had 16 minutes last time. I'm getting cut down. I think I'll be at four by the fall. Um, but uh, I didn't want to talk about Twitter or Facebook. Thanks.